What happened to little baby Lisa Irwin? She's the 10 month old who simply vanished five years ago. And her parents recently sat down with our investigative reporter, Angie Ricono. Brad and Ellen, the Irwins still live in the same home. And as we showed you at six, there are posters and banners covering the house. They've never been taken down. And inside, Lisa's crib is still in her bedroom. It's packed with all the presents for the birthdays and the holidays that she has missed. Five years. Tonight, we take a look at where the clues lead now. She's missing. Um, her name is Lisa Irwin. I went around the house and we're screaming for her. I said, call 911, call 911. Obviously, they are our main focus. I'm not calling them suspects. What's going on? Where's she at? Why is she gone? Now yeah, they're looking for a body and not a baby. We all want the safe return of baby Lisa. We just, we need her home. I mean, I'm still stuck at age one when she liked Barney and when she was barely walking and now she's going to be six and possibly in school and we've missed out on everything. I know you guys both firmly believe Lisa is alive and Lisa is out Absolutely. There. There's not a doubt in my mind and I'm her mom. I have, obviously I have, a, you know, my mother's intuition and I have never once felt for a second that she has been hurt or gone. Five years later, they still beg for information. Think of how much she deserves to be with the people that love her the most. Or think of yourself and take the money and leave town, whatever it's gonna take. They think she was kidnapped, then sold. This was not a one person deal. There's still a $100,000 reward in the case. Here's what happened in 2011. Jeremy Irwin returns home from work around four in the morning. The front door is unlocked. His daughter is missing from her crib. He wakes his wife and calls 911 from his work phone because the family's cell phones are reportedly missing. Published reports say those phones stay close to the family home and were used throughout the night. The parents originally suspected someone came in through a front window or front door and then made their way back to Lisa's room. The phones were charging in the kitchen. Nothing else was taken. An Amber Alert was issued, and investigators swarmed the house and neighborhood searching for little Lisa. They searched wells, comb fields, and one cadaver dog reportedly smelled something in the parents' bedroom. Try to think of anything or anyone or any reason this might have happened. It soon became obvious investigators suspected Lisa's mother. Did you fail a lie detector test? No, absolutely not. I was told I failed as a tactic, and I understand why they do that. It's still difficult to talk to them. It's difficult to hear some of their theories, and then after all that is all said and done, you, you still have to have a workable relationship with these guys down there at the uh, police department. Deborah drank with the neighbor the night her daughter vanished. That information cut both ways. Some speculated she may have accidentally killed her daughter, then hid the body. But others wondered, how could a drunk person commit the perfect crime? Well, my gut tells me, uh, without any doubt, that somebody unknown to the family came into this home uh, was in and out of the home very, very quickly. Attorney Cindy Short represented the family in those early days and remains in close contact with them. She calls the parents credible and heartbroken. And there's an open field beyond these trees. Short conducted her own investigation. She explored other leads where neighbors reported seeing a man and a baby the night Lisa went missing. Our prayer is that once uh, the baby left, this part of the community or Clay Como that she ended up somewhere uh, safe and, and warm. Um, statistically, that's probably not the outcome, but it's certainly the one we pray for. One tip that became very public involved this man, John Tanko. He's a handyman with a criminal record who worked near the Irwins at that time. He dated this woman, Megan Wright, who says her phone was called by one of those missing cell phones the night Lisa vanished. Wright says others had access to her phone. Kansas City Police report Tanko cooperated with investigators and they are satisfied with his answers. I do not believe this was a stranger abduction. Former FBI agent Michael Tabman says kidnapping a 10-month-old 
doesn't make sense. Statistically, stranger abductions generally involve middle school girls, like 11-year-old J.C. Dugard, 12-year-old Polly Class, and 14-year-old Elizabeth Smart. Lisa's age was tough to explain. Why would this child at this age be disappearing now? Five years have rolled by. Age progression photos show what she may have looked like at three and now five. If she's out there and she can see this, um, I would just want her to know that we love her. We miss her a great deal and uh, we're gonna find her and we're not gonna stop looking for her. I and love you, Lisa. We will get her back home where she belongs one of these days.